when we decided to start our RTI process, we, we decided we wanted to target all students in the school because we were noticing a, a comprehension and reading deficiency as they were entering seventh grade here. So I started doing some research and someone put me in touch with a school system in Oregon. And this lady in Oregon mentioned rewards as something that they were using. So I started doing some research online and found that it was it had enough materials at a reasonable price where I was able to start addressing Lexiles as low as 350 and the same program at a different level would continue to address Lexiles all the way through 800, 750, 800. So it was, it was cost efficient, very easy to train the teachers, very user friendly and met the needs that we had specifically at the school. We have a reading intervention period every day. It starts at 7.20 and ends at 8 o'clock. It used to be what we called advisory and we, we got rid of the homeroom structure and went strictly to a reading intervention structure. We're using the basic rewards book, we're using rewards intermediate, we're using reward plus the science and the social studies and then this year, this is our second year using all of those, but then this year we started using rewards writing as well. My favorite thing about rewards is that you can drill fluency, you can drill phonemic awareness, you can go over those phonemes with middle school kids without making them feel like they're being babied. It's uh, fast moving, it keeps the kids interested, keeps the teachers interested. I got immediate buy-in from the teachers so that meant buy-in from the kids and it's going back to those basic skills which is the core problem when they're not learning the phonemes at an early age fluency is a lost cause and it has constantly built-in fluency screenings where the teachers can walk around and, and listen for fluency and then the kids are checking each other's fluency so it's building fluency which is a number one with people who are deficient in comprehension you have to start with the fluency we haven't had a need to really do any follow-up training from the outside because our teachers that did it the first year became so fluent in the program that they then trained the newer people that were coming in to do it. We didn't have any faculty turnover, but what we found was that we had such success with rewards in year one, we, we expanded the program and we're using it with more classes this year. So those teachers that taught it last year kind of became the teacher of teachers. ELA proficiency increased 10% in one year. That's among 7th and 8th graders. That was school-wide. We had an increase of 10% in ELA proficiency, which here, that means students scoring basic or above on the LEAP or ILEAP test. So we look at, you know, how did the classes in Rewards Orange do? How did the classes in Rewards Blue do? We look at the data as a class and the data as individuals, and we've consistently seen an increase in their scaled score on our universal screener. Uh, if we weren't seeing increases, we wouldn't have used it a second year. That I would have never wasted money on something that wasn't working. So we saw tremendous growth.